In this lecture, we want to examine the different ways of knowing. How do we acquire knowledge? So we want to lay emphasis on ev evidence-based knowledge. There are different ways of getting to know things, but in this lecture, we want to lay emphasis on knowledge that is based on evidence. So we are introducing certain concepts. So first of all, we are going to show the alternative ways of knowing. The first one is logic. So some beliefs are simply self-evident. You can say they are evident, they are logical. You can say some beliefs simply make sense because it makes sense. However, the unfortunate part is that logic can lead us to some beliefs that are just wrong. Because you think it makes sense because of faulty logic, it can lead you into trouble. Actually, logic and common sense have led to some costly errors in life. Now, another way of getting to know things is tradition. Everyone who comes from a cultural group, each cultural group has certain traditions. So these are some beliefs are accepted in a culture and are generally not questioned or challenged. However, traditional beliefs may promote stereotypes or continue the oppression of some society members. So in certain cultures, certain members are seen a certain way. If you look at some cultures, the role of different people are just different. Maybe women have a certain role and that's just the tradition. So traditional beliefs, we may know things through tradition, but it doesn't mean that's the only way we have to know things. Now I want to emphasize something. The, al the alternative knowledge sources, we are not saying they are wrong, we are simply saying they are different from knowledge that is based on evidence. Now, another way of knowing things is from authority. It's a different way of knowing. It's not a wrong way, but it's different from evidence-based knowledge. So we say other knowledge is gained through difference to authority. For example, when you go to your physician, when you go to the hospital, you do not question what the doctor says. You trust them. They are a person on authority and you expect them to do their job properly. Politicians make declarations and at times we believe them. Administrators and agencies, your professor, those who teach you things, your parents, they are people in authority. However, that's simply a different way of getting to know things. Unfortunately, people in authority are also subject to bias and limited experience. Now, I want to say something. There are two different authorities types of authorities you have people who have an authority based on knowledge they are they are an authority in their field for example a physician when they say something concerning your health they are an authority based on knowledge but if a physician is telling you something about i don't know research methods or maybe how to play hockey that they they are saying their opinion is as good as the opinion of of anyone where a physician is saying something about economics when they are not an economist then you cannot take them seriously however irrespective of what they say even if it's based on uh, on knowledge it is simply not an evidence-based way of knowing things so faulty knowledge promotes stereotypes so all the other ways all the ways i've just talked about it's possible that logic, tradition, and authority can affect our judgment. The way we see things, it's affected by all of the, these things. Our cultural reality, where we go, and they can cause us to draw wrong conclusions. They can even promote faulty stereotypes and generalizations about people, about certain groups of people. We can look at them a certain way because we've been influenced by faulty logic, by a tradition, by a person of authority who said certain things and it influences how we see certain groups of people. At times, there is a disparity between what is generally believed to be true and what research has revealed. Now, it's also possible that people misuse research data. So research has the potential to dispel myth and stereotypes from untrustworthy sources. So if you look at evidence and you learn how to look at evidence, it can help you put away certain things. However, research can also be used to support a lot of 
myth and stereotypes so research findings should be presented in a complete and unbiased way so that people should not be negatively influenced by it now the scientific method we want to propose it as an alternative from the other ways of knowing now the scientific method is simply a way of thinking about and investigating assumptions you have certain assumptions you want to think about it from a certain perspective you want to question it and you want to investigate if those the assumptions you are making stand now the scientific method can help research consumers to be more effective at their jobs because they will be doing things based on what evidence has shown so talking about the scientific method science is simply empirical so the knowledge you acquire is based on evidence so empirical has to do with evidence with uh, exper with well i won't say experiment it has to do with evidence so science strives to be objective it doesn't always achieve it but it makes that effort science produces provisional knowledge science employs a public way of knowing the ways of so the knowledge is public it's not hidden knowledge it's not reserved for certain class of people when there is scientific evidence that is out there it is made public science employs certain rules procedures and techniques which is what we call the scientific method so the way of of uh, collecting evidence to test certain hypotheses it's public and those rules are clear to each and everyone now there are different types of scientific knowledge it's very important for you to be able to distinguish between them you have the descriptive knowledge you have the predictive knowledge and the prescriptive knowledge now the descriptive knowledge let's take for example the situation of homelessness in montreal or uh, hunger in montreal so you first of all want to be able if you think that is a problem you want to be able to describe it now for you to describe it properly you need to collect evidence so that what you are describing is based on evidence so descriptive knowledge gives us a better understanding of a problem it gives us a reasonable accurate picture of the way things are at a given point in time so if you go out you collect evidence on the situation of homelessness in montreal you can provide a description of that situation at this particular time it frequently forms the basis for desirable changes in a society because if you clearly shows that show that we have a problem of homelessness in montreal and you can show what causes that then we understand that we need to we need a policy that affects the cause of homelessness and also addresses that situation you don't just want to address the situation of homelessness without addressing the cause but for that to happen you first of all need descriptive knowledge now predictive knowledge is simply knowledge that helps us anticipate Pred predict the future with reasonable accuracy so if you've already described the situation and you understand the co the cause of it you can predict with reasonable accuracy so it evolves from the accumulation of descriptive knowledge that reveals re-occurring patterns so science is based on patterns because if you collect data and someone else goes and collect the same data they should be able to arrive at the same descriptive and predictive knowledge it stops short of suggesting how to intervene to prevent or treat a problem so descriptive will describe predictive will predict but it is not telling you what to do now what to do comes with the prescriptive knowledge prescriptive knowledge suggests how to intervene to prevent a problem from occurring so it's under the assumption that you have described the problem you've understood what causes that problem or it also it's there to tell you how to treat a problem that already exists it's usually based on the findings of carefully designed research studies in other words data or evidence has to be collected it offers the research consumer knowledge for interventions and promoting
policy changes. So let's talk about two different approaches which are used in research. We have quantitative and qualitative research. They are quite different. So the quantitative research relies on the use of what we call logical positivism. Now, when we talk of logical positivism, you have a lot of these things. At times, you throw it in the field of epistemology, and you have a number of them, but we don't want to spend time talking about the different uh, subgroups. So just to let you know, it relies on data. Okay, it's it assumes that we can use the same approach that you see in natural sciences. So in a field like biology, chemistry, data is collected and anyone who goes to collect data in those fields generally comes out with the same result. So if you take your thermometer outside, you should end up having the same temperature. So it relies on that. It stresses the use of deductive logic now when we talk of deductive logic it's just the methodology so generally the deductive logic starts with problem identification it goes on with you formulating a question for example homelessness is a problem what question do you want to answer you can't just study homelessness you need to choose a particular aspect of it and then study it else you, you your research will be too big you will not not be able to do an effective job so you need to formulate your question you now need to review literature to make sure you are aware of the theories which are out there concerning the question you want to answer what have others done then based on that you want to construct a hypothesis which is an educated guess concerning your research question then you have to design and plan how you will collect the data to test if your hypothesis holds or not then you move on to execute that you collect data after collecting the data you need to sort and analyze the data then you need to specify your research findings, interpret the findings, and then disseminate your research findings, and finally use it to address the problem. So it looks as a linear process, but it's generally not a linear process. In real life, people don't just follow these steps the way we are talking about, but in short, that is what the deductive is all about. We generally start from a theory and we move on to test whether it holds. Now, talking about qualitative research, it is subjective, it's relative, and it's contextual. So you look at it, so from one context to another, it may be different. So for example, it relies on inductive logic. And inductive logic, we generally don't start from a theory, but we, of course, start from a problem identification. You identify a problem, you have your research question formulation, and literature review is not a big part of it because uh, you don't want to start from theories. However, you want to go and collect the data or, well, when we say initial data collection, we are not talking of quantitative data in this case, but we are talking of words. At times, it's quantitative data, but it's not always that. It's much more words. It's much more narratives. So, we we collect, again, more data, and we analyze more data. Then we have to interpret the data. From the data that is collected, it's interpreted, and there is formulation of theories and or hypotheses, and then the findings are disseminated and then used by research consumers or policy makers. Now, when we talk about quantitative versus qualitative research debate, there is really no real winner in it. Both quantitative and qualitative methods are necessary to truly understand a problem. It should be used together. So neither type of research is inherently superior to the other. Research studies are often often hybrid, containing aspects of both methods. So in this course, we are going to be looking at both methods and seeing the different ways of implementing them. 
to respond to social issues. Now, in the current climate of social research, generally research consumers are becoming aware that well-designed, credible research studies are essential to provide the best services. If you really want to do something about homelessness, you can't just do it based on what you say it's logical or some traditional beliefs. You want it to be on the basis of research that has been collect that has been carried out. So sound research is a necessity if we are to demonstrate that our efforts are worth their cause. Else we will be doing things without any evidence. Have fun.